All right, thank you for looking into another edition of the Vulcan Report. All right, um, this report is for trading on May the 18th, 2016, with the Fed minutes due out this afternoon, uh, this Wednesday. It's going to determine the course of the markets, of course, and what we do. I just wanted to make a quick video pre-announcement. This right here is a chart of the DFN. If you remember, I introduced this chart the other day. Um, those of you who listen to me have already realized that this is already going up to $10.90. So we already are starting to move up in this extremely nice dividend play. As you will know, that um, this, uh, this, um, this stock this closed in fund that trades on the uh, Toronto Exchange, it does pay a monthly dividend. And already it's almost to like its 150 month straight dividends or something like that. I think we're like at 146 or 148 or something. But this is a really good um, dividend play for those of you who are searching for income. This is a really good one to, to have. Um, as with most and if not all, Closed-in funds, there's no correlating uh, options market on this one, but you can still uh, do some uh, strategic plays if you want to um, write premiums and things of that nature. What you do is you have to use um, other means, but there's still a way to hedge yourself, believe it or not. Um, and for those that are interested, hit me up and I'll uh, explain more to you. But just wanted to point out that this uh, this particular um, stock is doing pretty well right now. Uh, as you can see, we are moving higher as we have recuperated from down here from these lows, and it's heading much higher. Switching our focus now intraday to the Dow, you can see it is quiet. Quiet as a church mouse. Nothing going on here. We had economic data to come out and the market still not moved. Still in a downward channel here. Nothing going on. Nothing to write home about. Momentum's coming off. It's weak. And like I said, the market is in jeopardy of a negative pulse wave. One thing I want to point out. Uh, the stock indexes in particular have been obeying the pulse wave triggers, the weekly pulse wave triggers. We've been oscillating between the um, the lower pulse wave and the upper pulse wave, uh, and especially in the Dow. It's been um, just moving back and forth and respecting uh, those pulse waves. So that's something to think about uh, when going forward. Um, I designed these pulse wave triggers to be uh, sensitive to market movement and to filter out market noise. And what normally happens is the markets will trade in between uh, these these two bar charlies. For those of you who have been with me for some time, you remember what the two bar charlie is. Two bar charlie is a setup that happens in overnight markets and right before the 930 open. And you normally see them take place in the futures first, and then the equities normally follow suit. Two bar charlies are powerful indicators because when those setups happen, you have an all day event. So, an all day up day or an all day down day where the markets trend intraday. And what I set out to do is to predetermine those two bar charlie setups a week in advance and where the support and resistance is going to be intraday as well as where the pulse wave breakouts are looking at market depth and put call ratios and other things that uh, basic technical indicators and analysis cannot pick up and it would be impossible so you only get that here uh, with the Vulcan report so I just wanted to throw that out there as well now moving on as I warned, and I know many people did not like this, they did not want to hear it, but here it is. I warned you that the precious metals would be under attack as the Fed is feeling pressure to keep the market afloat. And I warned you of that. I said, be wary, beware, be careful of a possible pullback, if not flash crash, 
uh, proportions in these metals. Well, unfortunately, silver is already um, move, moved beyond and triggered the two bar Charlie to the downside. And we hit the $16 handle uh, again in, in the silver, okay? We, we hit $16.92 already. All right, so it, it is recovered and it's now at 1714, but you have to watch it, all right? When these when these crash alerts come out for the week, I'm not putting them out there because I hate metals. I love metals. I love gold and silver. Gold and silver is money. We all know that. But we also know that this is a market and this market has been manipulated by fed forces all right and they have to keep it at bay as much as possible in order to keep the dollar up and the stock market up and the bonds healthy so they have to hit these metals leaving you no safe haven to to to, to run to when equities uh, you know turn down a little bit or a lot normally money will pour out of equities and into safe havens like gold and bonds well you know that breakdown of correlations uh, has been happening for some time now because of continued uh, Fed manipulation and interaction in these markets so a lot of correlations have broken down that's why you'll see the dollar and oil moving together moving not together moving with equities moving not with equities just all kind of bananas that you never would have seen before so you can't even trust it uh, but what you can do is you can still trade a, man, a heavily manipulated market. You just have to know what the manipulators are up to and be able to read the tea leaves, so to speak, and look at the breadcrumbs they leave behind and the warnings and signals they give out and just follow the money. All right, so you're not um, necessarily trying to, to, um, to predict what's going to happen. You just want to be able to predict something is happening when it's happening. You want to be able to see it. Sort of like being in the wilderness and all of a sudden there's a stampede. Well, the first thing you want to you want to think of is, okay, I need to get out of the way of the stampede or I need to run with the stampede. But you don't want to run against the stampede or you will be trampled to death. So that's the same thing with, uh, with the pulse waves in the market. You want to find the next wave and ride with it. Even though you don't know where you're going to end up when the wave is over you still want to ride it because it's better to ride with the wave than to go against it all right as you can see here this uh, this is red uh, we're working on week three of bearishness in the silver all right so pullbacks can be healthy but is this pullback going to develop into something we don't know yet but it's not like gold and we'll look at gold here in a second all right see the gold is trying to be green but you, you can see the volumes are coming off it's still flat but at least it's green silver is, is struggling a little bit more here to, to stay fresh so right now the market is in question let me tell you what to watch for now in the gold real quick all right we need to crash back above 1285 to stay healthy right now we're pulse waving negative all right just so you know it's not really following through, but it's still negative. Got to get back above 1285, which is back above the top of the Kumo cloud. As long as we stay below the Kumo cloud, we get weaker and weaker as time goes on. You get lower and lower prices until it starts to accelerate. All right, we don't want to close below this 1270 today. We need to close higher. Closing below the 1270 puts 1250 in play and takes out these supports rather easily don't want to see that okay don't want to see a, a negative pulse wave on the weekly in this market but right now it is setting itself up for that as long as we pulse wave negative on the intraday four hour chart all right all right so keep that in mind we, we want to see gold healthy all right switching our focus now to the dollar index as you can see, dollar index also is struggling a little bit. It's red. This is week two. Right now it's in jeopardy of 94.41. If it takes out that 94.41 support, we drop in between the uh, air pocket between the trend line support and the top of the Kumo cloud. 
and that would be extremely bearish for this dollar I think they're going to continue to push it up every time it touches any one of these trend line supports first support they push it back up again because they get scared I don't think they're going to let it but they may not be able to stop it we'll see how much longer they can keep the game going but right now 9470 um, market still in a pullback state we'll see if they can um, push it up further after the, some more of these announcements we'll see I think the thing that's helping too here is like if you look at this NASDAQ on an intraday um, same thing as gold it's below the Kumo cloud trying to power up a little bit but it needs to get above 43.80 and a half as long as it's staying down here it's showing itself to be weak even though it's um, up on the daily chart at uh, up 18.75 points still weak on the intraday and it's in jeopardy as well but you know powering up here but it's about to be overbought it's about to get sold not looking good technically still negatively pulse waving crossed here it's like we did back here didn't get too much follow through but we're doing it again now uh, you know twice the charm so not looking good need to get above 43.80 and a half looking at all intraday uh, all support right now is at 47.90 uh, repeat it's at 47.90 that is your support right now uh, trendline support in the oil uh, oil's gonna have to uh, work very hard too to figure out what it wants to do uh, it is marching to that 50 I suspect it's starting to get a little tired we're hitting the overbought now um, and this market could very well um, crash on you you know with no problems inventories came out and technically they were bearish but I knew that the market wasn't gonna go down because like I told you they want to push this to 50 maybe even 60 but I think we're gonna pull back first at 50 before hitting that 60 but the up upward trajectory is in play for this market this is where it's going uh, I don't see any end in sight just yet even back here where on an intraday where we negative pulse wave we got no follow through and this pullback just served as power up for the next leg up and then we, we burst it through it so just like we did back here burst it we burst it failed here but then we failed to follow through in a negative pulse wave only to burst higher again so it's it's been waffling around it's been waffling around so if you missed this this week's breakout in the oil because you weren't paying attention to the pulse wave reports on the website then only thing you can do is wait um, for the pullback or the next signal which will probably be a sell short and you can ride that correction and then you gotta quickly reverse and get ready for the next leg higher in the oil so right now for those of you who missed the long you can try your hand at the next corrective short at 47.90 that's where you are right now alright let's see how Warren Buffett's doing Warren Buffett's Apple is up today it's at 94.54 right now is where we're trading 94.54 um, the market is up a dollar uh, it was uh, as you know it broke that 89 handle and it's rallied approximately five dollars from that low right now this market is also in jeopardy we're setting up like we did last time here when we hit that 89 low uh, that last breakdown of 92 hit us to 89 right now it's in jeopardy um, it's dangerously close to the, the, the intraday support of 92.39 92.39 folks is your apple you don't want to see a break below 92.39 if it breaks 92.39 then it's going to retest the 89 low and continue to plummet just like you know it before the Buffett indicator the Buffett indicator says whenever Buffett puts a bunch of money into an equity, that equity will correct almost immediately, shortly or shortly thereafter, the announcement. Just like it did before during the 2008 crisis when he dumped a lot of money into Golden, Goldman Sachs. So I just wanted to put that out there for you guys so you can remember that um, you know there's no real fundamental reason for Apple to go up. 
and I know those of you who trade equities you guys are into fundamental analysis and right now there is no story for Apple to be going higher if anything it should be much lower by another 30 to 40 bucks and I think that's where we're going all right let's look at food it's about lunchtime everyone should be hungry so let's look at soybeans soybeans right now intraday is dangerously close to the trend line support of 1063 and three quarters a break below that would set up the 1031 to be back in play again so be on the lookout for that correction looking at live cattle live cattle is also in danger of um, breaking out higher instead of lower uh, a breakout here is at 124.67 and a half and that would set up the 130 to be in play right now technically speaking it is in a negative pulse wave position as it just broke the 122.60 so we'll see if it can if it's going to gather some steam to the downside or is it going to try to break out intraday but that's where you are right now so if you're if you're short this your stop is at the 124.67.5 if you're flat and looking to get in then you're going to look to get long 124.67.5 alright looking at the feeder cattle feeder cattle trends a lot better it's a much smoother chart than live cattle I like the feeder cattle better uh, right now this one is negative pulse wave and without any follow through and is dangerously close to breaking out to the upside 150.89 or 150.90 somewhere around there uh, that will set up the 155 to 160 to be in play on the feeder cattle however if we do get follow through and we fail to fall then the lows of 138.57 uh, half is going to be in play looking at coffee coffee has been breaking out as you can see and now it's breaking back down trend line support is in play of 127.86 after breaking 130.55 that is in play right now so that one is going to wait to see how it plays itself out but it's looking like it wants to give back some all right looking at sugar sugar is negatively pulse waving right now once again we are pulse waving negative in the sugar as it broke its previous support of 1652 one thing to be noted though is that this is elevating off the trend line support of 1619 and if I had to say I would say that right now it's powering up to break out above the 17 handle so this one even though it's in a negative pulse wave position because it's been such a uh, upward momentum play I think it's gonna break out again to the upside so I'll be watching that 1699 breakout and that's all we have time for <coughs> excuse me right now it's been this video is getting longer than I wanted it to be but this is a pre-fed minutes video and we just wanted to evaluate also the Buffett put or the Buffett indicator so remember, take what you can, give nothing back. Bulls make money, bears make money, but pigs get slaughtered.